Hello, my name's Mark and I am G-Code Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinist today to look at how we can program multiple parts with the same program by using variables. Okay, so this bit of code here writes the rough in cycle for the part above me right here, this bush, nice and simple. So at the start of the program, you might have noticed I've got this bit up here. Well, that's to help me write this program. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So we're gonna convert this program to use variables. And this way we can change just by editing these top three lines, how this part looks and the sizes of this part. Okay, so let's make a start. So let's issue some variables at the very beginning here. So let's say this is variable 101. And this one, might as well go with 102 and 103. Now, it's quite a good um, routine, a good habit to get into to use variables for our stock bar size. And this is because sometimes we have to work with the wrong size bar and we can very easily edit it by just changing a variable like this. Okay, so how does this work? So let's have a look. So if we go for our program and we take the first X move, we've got X 53 here. So what that is, that's our stock bar size plus three millimeter clearance, because it's a rapid move. It's our first rapid move as a tool approaches the part. Now, when we're working with variables, we need to often put it in brackets if there's maths involved. If this X just equaled 35, for example, or 50, then we could use variables 103 or variables 101. But because we want to add to that variable, we need to add it in brackets. So let's change this. So let's put a bracket and then variable 103. Now, because it's in brackets, we can do some maths. So, oops, so we can add in here another three millimeters on the end like that. So now it reads our variable 103, which so it's gonna read 50 millimeters from this line up here, and it's gonna add three millimeters to it for a bit of clearance. So we've changed that one there. Now we can go down and change our next rapid move, this X51 here. Now this is also stock bar size, because um, our stock bar size is 50 plus one. So we do the same thing here. So in brackets, we would put the variable 103, and then we would add one to that, like that. So now we have that um, second variable called there. So now when we come in and say we're working with 60 millimeter, millimeter diameter bar, we just change this to 60 and the whole program will convert to allow us to use that size bar. Okay, let's pop that back to where it was. Okay, so let's read down the program and see what other measurements that we can change with variables. So we're coming to our roughing cycle, G71. Our first line of our subroutine calls another X dimension. So let's have a look at that one. So X21, so again, this is our diameter B plus one millimeter. So we can change that. So we have to keep the X and then brackets, we call in our variable again, which is 102, not 103 there. Um, and we can add one millimeter to it, close brackets. So this way it's now called upon 20 millimeters plus one or whatever we change this variable to up here. Okay, so now as we continue reading down our program, we go into um, linear move there. We've got cutter compensation, Z move and a feed rate. And then we have another X value here. So this X value here is again, our variable 102 because it's coming down to our smaller diameter there, diameter B. So before we've done some maths with variables. Now, if we're not doing any maths with variables, if we're just calling a variable, we don't need to add it in brackets. So right here after X, we would just call this 102, variable 102. Now we don't need to put this in brackets because there's no maths involved. We're not adding the plus one or the plus three as we've done before. So we just called in a straight variable there. So whatever variable 102 equals, we'll change this X diameter right here. Okay, so as we go down, we have another X here. So this would be X 101, because this is our major diameter. So we're coming down on diameter B, the smaller diameter, then going up to the major diameter. So this one, we can just change to a variable as well. We don't need to do any maths, so we can change this to 101. So that's just gonna call X uh, 35 millimeters in this case, or whatever we decide to change that value of the variable 101 to. Now on our exit line from our subroutine here, we've got another X dimension. So let's have a look at this. So what's this one? Well, this one is our 101 variable, 
plus five millimeters. It's 40 millimeters. Now 101 is 35. So this would be 101 plus five millimeters. And this would be giving us some clearance as we wrap it away from the back of our part here. Okay, so let's change that. So we need to do some maths in this one. So it's gonna be in brackets. So we're gonna be calling upon variable 101 and we're gonna be adding five millimeters slap. Then we're gonna close the brackets. So we're gonna do some maths there. So it's calling variable 101, adding five mil to it, give us some clearance. So with those X values changed, we can now change these values to change our entire program. So say for example, we want the smaller diameter here to be 25 millimeters. We just change this to a five and we run the program and then it's gonna produce that part a 25 millimeter diameter there. So you can see this is great for a family of parts at slightly different sizes. And we can also use this to change speeds and feeds. So if your part is different material, we can approach that by using variables too. Now, if you want to learn more about programming variables, CNC G-code programming, CAD CAM, Machine Shop Maths, and lots of other Machine Shop subjects, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com and start learning today.